Hi everybody and welcome to this revision video on the biopsychosocial model as it applies to forensic psychology as part of stage one psychology. So let's get started. The biopsychosocial model in psychology as we know refers to the different perspectives that we need to study behavior. So human behavior needs to be studied from multiple uh, perspectives. We can't just look at one perspective because we could be missing vital information. So this helps to explain behavior as a holistic concept. So that means we need to look at all three parts of the model. So we need to look at the psychological factors, the social factors, and the biological factors, hence the term biopsychosocial. So again, just to recap, the breakdown of the biopsychosocial model, the bio is the biological influences on behavior, the psycho is the cognitive or psychological influences on behavior, and the social is the social factors that influence behavior. So applying this to forensic psychology, let's look at the biological factors first. So again, the biological and or chemical factors that influence behavior. So in terms of criminal psychology, this could include inheritable traits. So things like the warrior gene that we've talked about in class could be inherited. Hormones such as testosterone, uh, there are links to suggest that the higher the testosterone level, that may then link to higher levels of aggression, which is any intentional act to harm someone or something. It could be, again, a person was under the influence of drug and alcohol, and that could have contributed to their criminal behavior. An imbalance in neurotransmitters within the brain and processing in terms of the prefrontal cortex, and differences in brain anatomy in terms of, again, processing information and emotional control. So all of these things have in common that they are either biological and or chemical factors that may contribute to the likelihood of someone engaging in criminal behavior. Now, that's all well and good, but we can't just focus on the biological. We need to look at the other factors as well. So now let's talk about the psychological factors. So the cognitive and or psychological factors that influence behavior. This includes universal and individual aspects of humans. So some of these we um, as human beings all possess and some are unique to the individual. So again, it includes not only thinking, cognition and perception and memory, but it also includes individual differences of things like personality. So speaking of which, someone may have a more aggressive personality than somebody else, but that would be a psychological factor that dictates their behavior. It could be that they are very controlling in their personality, all right? Uh, they may be very masochistic as well, all right, and have higher levels of that compared to someone else in terms of personality. They may have feelings of invincibility, that they are invincible and can ne cannot get caught. A high desire for power, that's very, very characteristic of someone with a personality disorder such as antisocial and narcissistic, which I'll talk about in separate videos. Just general personality traits or disturbances, all right, are more, well, can contribute to the onset of criminal behavior, similar to the ones I've already discussed. It may be due to past experiences, so memories and abuse in childhood and so on. Childhood trauma may also contribute to criminal behavior and a strained relationship with parents. All of these things are psychological factors because it involves the perception or personality or cognition of a criminal engaging in particular criminal behaviors. But we also must take into consideration the social influences. So this examines an individual's social environment and how these factors influence behavior. So it could be a person's customs and the social customs that they have been taught to abide by. Concepts of the law, so different countries obviously have different laws, some are more relaxed than others, some are more severe than others, so the actual law itself being a social factor may influence criminal behaviour, either positively or negatively. Childhood raising practices, again by the family or the parents, if it was particularly harsh or particularly lenient or neglectful, that may contribute to criminal behaviour. Cultural identity and discrimination may also be huge factors as well, depending on the individual case. So receiving discrimination then may lead to um, certain crimes being committed because of discrimination or racism or things or social issues in that respect. The family structure again and certain religious beliefs may also contribute to the lack of or increase of criminal behavior. So guys, that is a revision video on the biopsychosocial model in reference to criminal behavior. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising.